generally want to start by supporting uh, this initiative. Mr. Speaker, at the outset, it is important for Kenyans to understand that when members of parliament speak of needing the CDF, they do not need it for themselves. With or without the CDF, the members of parliament have their salaries. And in fact, without the CDF, the workforce, uh, the task is reduced. But Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, every day, and I'm sure I speak for all the members here, we get no less than 100 phone calls of children who are at home because they cannot get bursaries. So it is not the members who are suffering, it is the people. I want to announce, Mr. Speaker, that the one thing that unites Kenyans, and I had the privilege to write this constitution, everywhere we went, the one thing people supported was the CDF. And I will explain why we did not entrench it at the time. And I think we were wrong. We should have entrenched it at that time. Mr. Speaker, the principle of having the CDF is very noble. And it is the same principle of, of why we have devolved government at the county level. The same principle why in Article 173 we created the Judiciary Fund. So it's a bit ironical for the judiciary to find that the principle in the CDF is unconstitutional, but the Judiciary Fund is constitutional. Mr. Speaker, at the outset it should be stated that although we support and I support this initiative and it will be moving forward, let it not be an excuse not to disburse CDF. I want to say here authoritatively, Mr. Speaker, that as we speak today, there is no court order, not of the High Court, not of the Court of Appeal, not of the Supreme Court, that stops disbursement of the CDF under the 2015 Act. None. And I want to urge that even as we go, we meander our ways through this amendment, let the CDF be disbursed because it is constitutional as we speak. 